It's Rob Cressy, founder of Bacon Sports, and I've got a special episode of the podcast for you talking about the 75 Hard program, but this is actually the second part of it, the phase one of Live Hard. And joining me to jam about it, he's the founder of Euphoria, an active lifestyle brand based around the pursuit of happiness. He's also part of an accountability group I'm part of, and he's also a friend of mine. Say hello to Brendan Pettit. Man, that's a hell of an introduction, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's good to be back. You deserve it. So why are we doing this episode? Because what we're doing is extending the conversation of our 75 Hard Journey, because this is actually part of a larger program called the Live Hard Program, where there are four total phases and 75 Hard was the prerequisites. Um, and let's start with this. If you didn't listen to the last podcast we did, it was episode 349 of the Sports Marketing Huddle, where we talk about our 75 hard journey, where we went through all 75 days and what we learned from it. In this episode, we're going to talk about the 30-day live hard challenge that we did for phase one, which I like to call sharpening my sword, because it was a vastly different experience than we had in the beginning. Would you agree? Yeah, I would, for sure. All right, so to quickly recap, here is what we had to do or we got to do every day as part of phase one of the Live Hard program. We had to do everything that we did in 75 hard. So drink a gallon of water, work out twice a day, 45 minutes inside, 45 minutes outside. Read 10 pages of a personal development or entrepreneurship book. Follow a diet with no cheat meals and no alcohol and take a progress picture. In this phase, added on three other things. Five minutes of a cold shower, add three more items to your daily power list. So your to-do list, if you start with five, now you've got eight, and then 10 minutes of visualization. So let's start with this. Why did you decide to do phase one? I really wanted to get back into sort of a, a priming mode, man. I mean, it, the, the 75 part program really broke a lot of my bad habits. I mean, it forced me to break a lot of my bad habits. Let's put it that way. Um, and I just want to stay sharp. I, I love the feeling that I got and, and sort of that accomplished feeling of getting through 75 hard. And this is just sort of a stepping stone onto that. Plus, you know, we've been talking about it a lot, getting through the whole program uh, in this entire year is going to be a big accomplishment for both of us. So, you know, it's just chipping away at it, man, and trying to get better every day. And I feel like doing something that forces you to really hone in in this specific amount of time, just keeps you sharp. And, and it, it kind of cuts off the sort of 1% a day and starts to cut off 10%, 15%, 20%. Um, so I, I really think it's a huge benefit to do it in these sort of 30 day chunks of time too. Yeah. And it's once we did 75 days of this, it was like 30 didn't seem like much, which it was hard as crap. So we both well, that's start what gets you. That's what gets you is you think it's going to be easier. And then you end up saying, Oh yeah, it's the same program plus more. So well, because yeah. here's, here's what you learn every day is hard. So you've got to show up every day. And that's one of the things that it teaches you. It's mm -hmm. no days off and eat, even though I was supremely confident and let's talk about our mindset going into it. So going into 75 hard, I didn't know what in the world to expect. And at various points, it's, man, this is so far away. I just want to finish. And then as you start getting closer, the magnitude of it, 75 days. So when you're on like 60 or 70, you're like, man, I cannot screw up because I put so much effort into this. When I roll it into phase one, there is zero doubt that we were going to complete this without fail. Like the goal was no longer just finish. That's why I said sharpen the sword. So for me now, it was like, all right, what are the things that I'm going to learn about myself over these 30 days? And I walked with a different hop in my step because I was so supremely confident in what I was doing, but I was still learning. 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's, we can get through some of the different uh, points that we had to do every day, but I feel like that was a big thing for me was Sharpening the sword for me was figuring out how I really wanted to work some of these different things into my schedule, especially for the next time we do it. Because 
we talked about on the first one, the water thing, you know, trying to fit in the whole gallon before 12 and the sort of the problems it starts to cause when you have meetings and things to do. And it, so I was trying to sort of just chip away at that. The visualization was something that I've been, I had been trying to get into, but I hadn't quite formed a good habit. So uh, figuring out how to set up my schedule in the morning to do more of a priming visualization, do uh, the reading, some of that kind of stuff. So I didn't put it at the end of the day and only do it when I go to bed or, you know, just really try to mix it up and figure out how I wanted to fit these things in. I'm with you. I was ultimately confident that I was going to be able to finish it. So I walked with a different swagger going into it. It was really just about how can I tweak some of this stuff to make it better and uh, I guess get the most out of it each day too. So. Yeah, very much so. So let's get into our daily routines. And I'm a very routine oriented person. And I actually carried with me a lot of the things from 75 hard. So one of the questions we always got was, Hey, when 75 hard is done, what are you going to do? Like, are you just going to become this giant turd on your couch? And the answer is no. Uh, I worked out probably every day, except for maybe two from July until we started this right after Labor Day, like literally the Tuesday of that. Uh, so this is fresh. We're only one week from one week prior from today is when we had our last day. So this is very new for us um, mm -hmm. in terms of the routine. So in terms of what I was doing on a daily basis, it's the same things. Wake up, I would read for 20 minutes, boom, get my 10 pages out. Then I would go and do my outdoor workout, which is traditionally a walk or playing basketball. So I would do 45 minutes. And my first 10 minutes, I would set a timer and do my visualization. So now I started to stack it. And oh, by the way, I would drink uh, 16 ounces of water while that was happening. So water first thing while reading, water while walking, while visualizing, and then I would get to the gym and I would get two 16 ounce things of water done. So boom, right out of the gate by 7.30 in the morning, and I was waking up traditionally at five o'clock in the morning, either 4.58 or 5.11, something like that. So boom, I'd come back and it's 7.20 in the morning, and then I would drink eight ounces of water with protein and eight ounces of a green drink thing. So boom, five-eighths of my water is done by 7.30, and that was the exact same routine that I had for 75 hard. So I'm curious, what did the beginning of your day look like? So I actually stopped working out in the morning. Um, I wanted to try that out to see if just doing the priming and then, uh, well, I, I wouldn't say that I didn't work out because a lot of times I obviously I take my bike where I walk. So, but that wasn't my entire outdoor this time. I, I did some on the back end or riding to the gym, things like that. But my morning routine was really uh, about trying to do the priming. I did visualization, the 10 minutes of visualization. I did some meditation, just got my mind right, did some Tony Robbins fist pumps and tried to incorporate some different things that I didn't always stay consistent on. So that was sort of my focus going into it was the priming. And then I like to get into work right away. So in the mornings, my best creative time, my best time for like planning and executing on different tasks and things. So um, I would also get the water in, just like you were saying, I would get 16 ounces in immediately in the morning. Uh, when I got to the office, I'd do another 16 ounces, start really getting into my tasks and, and starting the day that way. Um, Similar to what I said on the first podcast, I didn't. I still don't eat breakfast, so I do more of like an intermittent fasting, which I started to see the effects of that when I would go to the gym or work out in the morning. Is it, it just? It sort of left me a little bit more laggy than I'd like. Um, so yeah, I had to switch that up a bit in the morning to get the day started. So it was pretty effective. After seven thirty gets here and I'm back from the gym, well, guess what? It's time to do take a shower. And let me tell you. 100% of the time, a five minute cold shower is cold as hell. And when I mean cold, <laughs> I mean as cold as it gets. And here's how you know, because you're playing with how much water actually comes out of the shower head, because not all showers will just allow you to go full blast on cold. It like trickles out nothing. So you, I had to find the medium where it was like, all right, will this actually give me water pressure? And man, it was freezing and going into it, my mindset was, all right, what would Jocko Wilnick do? And if you don't know Jocko, check out his book, Extreme Ownership, or his podcast, The Jocko Podcast. He's essentially one of the most badass Navy SEALs ever. 
And I thought, you know what? Jocko would take it like a man. He would man up and he would do this. He wouldn't be like, oh my God, the water's cold. So I'm like, all right, I want to get something out of this. I want my mindset to be right because I don't want this just to be this torturous, painful, why am I doing this? So boom, I've got the right mindset. And then I would put on music and I started to have certain songs that would come on that I would schedule over and over and over again. And what I would do is I would set my phone timer next to my shower for five minutes and 30 seconds because I would turn it on warm and essentially try and go from warm to freezing in 30 seconds. So I could be like, cause I didn't want to just jump into a cold ass shower. It's like, all right, warm for a little bit. And by little bit, it's like gone in like two seconds. And then boom, the music's going on there. And for the first few weeks, it was almost sadistic because I would be laughing while I'm dancing in the shower and listening to music because it's so cold that the only thing that I could do to myself was laugh at how funny this challenge was while it's just freezing water on me. So I'm curious to hear your cold water experience. Yeah, um, a little more all over the place because I tested out a bunch of stuff. So like, I, I did the timer thing similar to you. Um, I didn't really set the 30 second timer ahead of time. That's actually a really good idea. I, I have the opposite problem. Um, my shower ends up being the highest water pressure when it's cold. So like <laughs> that was great for me. Um, but a, a lot of times I tried stepping in while it was getting like warmer or like, you know, and, and when it was blasting cold and that was really hard. Those were probably the hardest days to get through it because you start out sort of already just miserable and and uh then you have to go through it and then i mean a lot of times i would take it out to the gym too so that was always a little easier because your body's hot things like that but a few times i let myself cool down and then i try to jump in and that has the opposite effect there's like a threshold where like if you let yourself get too cooled down and then you hop into a cold shower it's like 10 times worse um but yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I had to test out how I did the hot to cold. If I went back to hot, most times I didn't. Um, most times I just took a cold shower. And the noises, to your point, the noises that come out of the bathroom are probably pretty funny. I'm sure Jesse had some laughs because I'm, I'm in there like doing Tony Robbins fist pumps. I'm talking to myself. I'm like, I mean, a lot of stuff goes through your mind. And depending on what kind of day you're having too, I mean, the thing about cold water is it's going to break you of anything that's like going on in your head. Cause all you can think about is holy shit, this is cold. Um, but then you also have to sort of talk yourself into like getting in the mindset to get through it. Right. And to your point, you just have to power through what would Jack would do? What would Rob be doing? What would, you know, and you have to talk to yourself and sort of give yourself that mental toughness to get through it. And you, your body does eventually kind of act in, acclimate not completely not 100 percent, but it'll it, it does some favors and kind of numbs out after about a minute i think so that was good <laughs> and people are like well why in the world would you guys do this what is 75 hard and andy Versella said own the mental conversation with yourself and that's what the cold water the five minutes of a cold shower allowed us to do is we're owning that conversation what it also did is it really got me to appreciate warm water. So certainly in the first two weeks, when that five minutes was done, I'd be like, yes. And then boom, turn off my timer, turn that warm water on. And you would feel this just like rush go through your body where you're like, oh my God, this feels so amazing. So all of a sudden you have a different element of gratitude towards taking a shower because even now, and I've used cold water therapy, and I know you have as well. I've done it for years, but more on a micro basis. So every day I turn it on freezing cold water and yell courage, which I learned from Tony Robbins, to really help build up micro doses of courage because it takes courage to stand in the cold water. So let's get to the next thing, which I actually found to be one of the hardest parts of this challenge, and it looks like the easiest. Adding three more things to your daily to-do list. Because here's the thing, that means every day you're creating a to-do list on top of adding three more of it. So think about it. We are very both very regimented people. We're writing down our goals, the things that we have to do. And does that mean that 
on a Saturday or Sunday when you go to New York or Las Vegas or something that you're sitting there writing out your goals for the day. Traditionally, the answer is no, we're not robots. But guess what? For 30 days, we had to do it. And it was hard because I had to sit there and think to myself, all right, what can I do to help move myself and or my business forward? And I really had to start thinking about the micro because so often I'm just like, oh, let's do uh, relationship building on LinkedIn. And that's like an overarching couple hours thing as opposed to, I got to hit up Brendan. I got to send this tweet. I got to do this thing. And I found it very difficult. But what I learned from it is that it pushed me to do more, period. And the goal of this wasn't that you were going to get your power list completed every single day because the, the goal of the power list for Andy is if you get all five done, you win the day. If you don't, you don't get a win for the day. So I, I've always believed in that sort of mindset. So going into it, just by definition, by putting down eight things, I am so much better than I would have been otherwise. And I'm getting more done and I'm trying to win every one of these days. 100%, man. Yeah, I, I, uh, I sort of started out with the, yeah, I kind of do this already with Asana and some of these other things, but I don't really, I never really made a power five list every day. So I always started out with get three things on this list done, period, case closed. Two of those were things that I did consistently. So like I do some of the marketing and PPC in my business, and then I'm working on optimizing certain products or certain processes in my business. So it was sort of optimize one thing and work on something in the PPC. And sometimes those correlated so I could check two things off. But um, and then one was sort of miscellaneous. So the night before I've, you know, I've, for the past probably, I don't know, 180 days plus I've done uh, plan the night before. Um, so I would always sort of plan out my day, what it looked like, what else I could work on. And so I'd always have sort of a miscellaneous task or project I'd work on uh, as my third. So yeah, it was a huge thing. And it, it got me too, because I was like, yeah, man, I, I have a sauna. I got the team, you know, we always got stuff to do, you know, there's always something to check off the list, but it was being diligent about actually getting that checked off was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be for sure. Cause I'm not built that way either. I'm more of a visual visualization, like top level entrepreneur guy. So you know, getting down in the weeds and making sure I'm checking things off isn't always my forte. <laughs> right. So let's get to the 10 minutes of visualization. And this is a habit that I actually started when I ended 75 hard because I knew it was part of phase one. So I wanted to start, I was like, well, crap, I can add 10 minutes of visualization a day. That's easy because if Andy already, Andy and so many others believe in the practice then I'm going to start doing it. So as we speak, I think I've done uh, 10 minutes of visualization for 96 straight days. And for me, I really enjoyed the practice because I'm walking at like 5.45 in the morning in Chicago. It's pitch black out. And I would walk to down the street so I could see the Sears Tower every morning or most mornings. And it just inspired me. And I would let my mind wander in terms of, my dreams and what I want to accomplish. And I built out a, uh, like a vision board on my phone where I saved the photos into an album so I could just go through and scroll through and look at it. I love that practice. I'm going to continue it. And I believe it's something that'll be with me the rest of my life. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Um, it was hard for me to get into the stride of doing it. I'll be honest. But once I sort of found uh, a few things that work similar to you. I have images on my phone. I saved a background of like the house that I want on my computer. Um, just put things in front of me that always sparked that sort of thinking. Um, I, I did a couple different things. So I know Ed, Ed uh, shared that Tony Robbins sort of walks you through um, some things to think about and things to be grateful for and all of that. So I tried that a couple of times. That was good. So I incorporated just sort of thinking some of those questions to myself and writing that out. Um, yeah, I, I went through a couple iterations of this, but I can tell you that um, it, it definitely helps you with the priming part of the day. If you want to get excited and be grateful and be excited to start the day, do something like this. Think about what, how good the future is going to look. Think about what you're going to have. Um, 
sometimes what you're not going to have, what you're going to eliminate and get rid of if you're working at something. I mean, there's so many things that this can get you excited for. So yeah, I really loved that part of it, but it was definitely harder than I thought it was going to be to get it going. And while we're here, I want to give a shout out to our third accountability partner, Eduardo Lopez, who is doing this with us, where the three of us were on a text chain together. And it was a way for us to support each other, give encouragement, because what I want to talk about next is the challenges, because inevitably, this may sound like it was easy for you and I to do, but it is anything but, and it's almost because we... We have the mindset of sharpening our sword. So we're willing to take the things that may seem difficult and make them part of our routine and do it day after day and pushing past the point of comfortable in the name of self-improvement because this is going to teach us the ultimate states of mental toughness and discipline. And that's what we're going for because this is a skills development program and we have to earn it every day and this is not easy. So Looking at the challenges, this was significantly harder in this 30-day span for me from a being out of my routine basis. So 75 hard, that was just hard as shit. But phase one of the live hard of the 30 days, I was in New York on two separate occasions, once for five days, once for two and a half days. And also the last four days of the program, I was moving within Chicago. So as you, and those were back to back. So I went in New York, got home and then moved for the next week. And man, that was so challenging. I think the hardest part of this was actually the mental fatigue of it where all this stuff is going on in my life. Like I did almost a quarter of my workouts in a hotel gym in Midtown Manhattan while I'm still doing business meetings and stuff and it's not natural to fly to New York and be like, hey, I'm gonna go work out for an hour and a half at three o'clock because I just got here and then immediately wake up the next morning at five in the morning to go do the workouts on top of now I've got to drink the water while I'm at an event for Facebook and Instagram and I got to take a leak every 10 minutes because I'm drinking a gallon of water and my goodness, it was so challenging for me because it made me appreciate my routine when I could do the same things over and over again. Yeah, 100%. And I, I don't know, I don't think you mentioned it, but you also celebrated your anniversary, did you not? I 100% celebrated my yeah, anniversary. So you, you need to mention that because I think the people would like to know that you actually celebrated your anniversary sober, stone cold sober, on a diet. I mean, the work. So that's a, that's a huge thing. I think a lot of people would probably push it off to the next month or do something like that, you know, but you, you powered through. Shout and out your to Mrs. Support. Bacon. Yeah. And because guess what they did? The restaurant we went to, which was a nice restaurant, of course they brought over free cocktails for us right when we got there because it's our five-year wedding anniversary. So boom, there's that. And then it's like, oh, dessert and like all of this different stuff. And it just teaches you to prioritize what's most important. And it's not that my wedding anniversary isn't most important, but drinking alcohol isn't the most important thing for me. I'm still present having a great time. So let's throw this on your end. What were some of the challenges you faced? Yeah. So right off the bat, I think within the first three or four days, I tweaked my lower back. Um, so that, that taught me a big lesson on, uh, sort of done versus perfect and intention you know beats like working your ass off if you want to say it that way uh, you probably have a better way to say it, but it, it, it's it was hard because the first probably 10 or 12 days I had to really work at um, keeping my mind sharp think because I, I started to get these thoughts in my head like you're not working hard enough you're not doing enough you're not whatever and, and I had to realize that like me doing yoga me doing physical therapy, me walking instead of running or, you know, riding my bike and, and those things like that were, were still helping me sharpen my mind and sharpen my focus and, and getting me where I wanted to go. And the discipline was what I was after, not um, the action or the results of that action, you know, um, the result was discipline. So that was a huge thing for me at the very, like right out of the gate. Um, the second thing I've mentioned it a couple of times, just in, in some of the, the tasks, but it, thinking that it was easier than it was, you know, thinking it was all breezy kind of snuck up on me. Um, 
And there's a couple of times because of like me walking and doing some of those things and more yoga and physical therapy, there was times where I didn't, uh, I realized that by like eight o'clock I hadn't taken my second shower or whatever, you know, and I was like, or my first shower in some cases. Um, and I, I would stop and go, wait, I didn't take a cold shower. Holy shit. And then that would prompt me the next day and the next day to go, okay, well, I need to go, you know, I need to put a better focus on how I put that in my schedule and when I do it, if I do it in the morning or in the afternoon. So it was really, you know, not having a routine was the hardest part for me because I was sort of testing all the time. But if you miss something on your list, you really had to be focused and disciplined at looking back at that sheet and going, did I check this off or did I not? Because it would sneak up on you for sure. So you, you touch on a very important thing that is crucial to anyone doing 75 hard or the live hard program, writing down each of the five or eight things that you need to accomplish. And even our other accountability group we have, it's a lesson that our guys unfortunately had to learn the hard way where leave nothing up to chance. So every single day in my uh, 10X planner, I was writing down all eight of these tasks and checking them off when they were done because you can't rely on your mind to be like, oh, I did this because inevitably life will happen, curveballs will happen. And you, like I said, you can't leave anything to chance. 100%. Well, in my, so in my defense too, like in really your defense, I didn't have as, as, tough a schedule as you did. I really made a point. We, me and Jesse actually had a separate goal of like not eating out and not doing anything. So outside of Jordan coming into our friend, Jordan coming in town for a day or two and me going to one of his things, um, it was very much like work, do what you need to do, come home, hang out, work a little more, whatever. And so it was very routine in that sense. But I think the sort of monotony and just the repetition of it all um, if I wasn't staying sharp on exactly what I needed to do, it was, it, there were times where, uh, and it was very few times, maybe three, four times where it snuck up on me. And I was like, okay, never again. Like, you know, within the first 10 days it happened, maybe like 15, 20. And then at the end, towards the end too, when I was like, okay, home stretch, this is easy. I got this. Like I'm on day 25. Um, yeah, I, I found myself having to really focus on the list instead of just like the routine, you know? Uh, so that was good. All right, so let's talk about the workouts because this is another area where the challenges would come in. Like I said, when I was traveling, I know that on, I don't know, four days remaining, our flight from New York to Chicago got canceled. We had to stay overnight. And all of a sudden, we've got like a 10 a.m. flight the next day. And guess what? Within 15 minutes of me being home, my shoes were on to go to the gym and I wanted to share this because you need to have this action oriented mindset. And that's what this program teaches you is that when something's important enough, you will find time to make it done. So for me, once four o'clock hit every single day, I was virtually done aside from when I would go out and following my diet, the not drinking, that wasn't a problem for me because at this point we're so pot committed on this. It's like, all right, I've got this down. Uh, I'm curious for you, how did the workout side of things go for you, aside from having to manage it with your back? Pretty good. I, I did a lot of the things. You know, I found a, a really some really good go-tos during 75 hard. Um, I, I did try to save time on uh, always biking to and from the gym, and, and there was a lot of time that I was taking up um, trying to get to and from where I needed to go. A lot of times, so on my train route down into the city, there's a gym right off the line. So I started hitting that gym instead of riding to the one that was a few miles from my house. Um, I would, there were, there's a sort of like the stairs at, with a, a crossover bridge that go back down. And I would, it's right outside my street and uh, on the main road. And so I would do stairs, sprint across, run down the stairs, and I would do that 10 to 20 times. Uh, and then walk around or run around the neighborhood. Um, so I found ways to make things a little more time efficient for me, but still, you know, get the work in and, and make it happen. Um, but I, I tried to be diligent about my time as well this time. One of the biggest challenges I have had is since 75 hard, as I mentioned, I've continued doing this. I really made it a point to 
be conscious of my weight. So I'm, re- I'm a lean person. So traditionally, I don't keep weight on well. Well, I am currently the lowest weight that I can remember in my life. So uh, I'm six feet tall. I traditionally walk around at 173. And I've worked out five days a week for the last 13 years. But since 75 Hard ended until the end of Live Hard, I've lost 10 pounds and I'm down to 163 and a half. And one of the big challenges for me on the diet side is I don't know how to eat like this. Like we're eating so clean, but I also don't know how to eat the volume of this clean stuff because Mm -hmm. it's just not so, it's not like I have a buffet at home of just endless amounts of things. But as I was slowly, and by the way, I'm not, I was not trying to lose weight by any means, 0%. But I had a mindset shift of, listen, this is happening naturally to me. My body has never looked better. I've never eaten better. My mind has never been better. So even though the scale is telling me one thing, I'm looking and I'm like, I look good as crap. So I'm not as concerned about it. I am looking forward to consciously putting weight back on in a smart manner but it's proof that if you wanted to lose weight in this program i lost 10 pounds without trying to lose 10 pounds like this is working out all of the time did you experience anything like this yeah i mean through the 75 hard program for sure i think this time around i lost about four to five pounds so i kept some on and uh still lost some i wasn't planning on it either i was actually trying to eat a little more take a little more protein do things like that um obviously the intermittent fasting helps that a little bit um but you know doing doing more of the the walking running and biking instead of lifting and things like that um for probably a good 10 to 15 days, uh, at least not heavy, was a big thing. I'm, I'm with you, though. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back into the gym and starting to lift heavier, maybe eat more, uh, maybe bring breakfast back into the equation and sort of gain a little bit more weight as well. Because I, I think when I started 75 hard, I was hovering around like 200, you know, uh, 205, 200. And then I was really, um, I really dropped a ton of weight when we did 75. And then this time around, it was probably three to four pounds. So it's, it kind of happens naturally, like you said, and you can't really control it. It's, it's just a a sort of what happens when you put the work in twice a day for (laughs) a significant amount of time, you know? Yeah. So as we wrap this up, let's give sort of some final thoughts now that we've, we've gone through phase one and it's weird. I feel like you lose a piece of your identity when it ends which is also weird because when it ends, you're like, rejoice. I'm like Andy Dufresne in, in Shawshank where you're like, all right, because you can, you're not on edge because it's, there's no compromise to this. And I think that's the biggest challenge and that's what wears on the mind so much is I enjoy, this is a lifestyle design for me at this point. But the no compromise part of this makes it such a challenge. You don't do one thing once you start back at the beginning. And I feel even in the last week, I was soft for two days. So like the day, the first day back, it was like, this is amazing. I'm eating pizza and stuff. And I did a yoga workout to just try and get me back to regular. And then the next day I played basketball and I looked back and I was like, man, I need, I need to sort of like get back on my game. And, and that's the beauty of this is it's sharpening our sword to where our standard is so much higher now that even when we're doing activities and we're doing more than like 95% of people, we're like, oh man, I know what I'm capable of. A hundred percent, man. I mean, the biggest thing, yeah, coming out of this, I was, I was pretty rough the first couple of days, you know, pizza and soda and donuts. And I, I wanted to cram it all in. And then after, yeah, that 24, 48 hours, you sort of look back and you're like, all right, like that was cool, but my standards up here now. So I need to get back in the gym. I need to hold myself accountable. Um, you know, I need to still eat clean and, and keep my mind sharp because, you know, your diet also helps with that. I think it's, it's sort of, 
you kind of write it off like, oh, it's helping with my weight and how my body feels. But really, like you, the clarity of mind comes from you cleansing through water, through diet, and then through exercise. It's it's a huge thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, when once you get off the program, I'm I'm with you, man. It's it's not a, an identity crisis by any means. I think you just are now held accountable to a different standard that you set for yourself. So, like now, instead of your your conscious being the bad negative roommate telling you that you need to go eat that piece of pizza. It's going, Hey man, what are you doing? You know, like you, you need to get back on your standard that you set for yourself. And so you're all, you're constantly playing that narrative versus the latter, you know? And I love what you just said. And it's a perfect way for us to end this. If you're someone who wants to be better, you just said it, set the standard for yourself. This is completely self accountability. And the reason why we're doing this to what people could see extremes is because you need to shock your system. You need to do something and go through the crucible to understand the development of the skills of what it takes. Because the confidence you and I and Ed have walking around right now because we've paid our dues every single day and we know the work and that's compounding. So for the rest of our lives, we're going to have this and think about everyone who doesn't have this mindset and I'm just so much more supremely confident. I'm a better person. I'm more grateful. I'm more thankful. I'm sharper. I'm better like every area of my life. And here's the thing. And I know you mentioned this too, when we were talking in our text chain, people would mention to us this glow that we have, Hey, you look really good. And I would ask my wife, I'd be like, I'm noticing people saying this and it's, it's weird it's when you're going through it, but like someone wouldn't see you for a month or even I ran into one of my clients at a, at the conference in New York. I hadn't seen him in six months and he's like, man, you look amazing. And it's, it's an interesting thing because how often do you roll up to someone and be like, man, you just look amazing. Oh, a hundred percent, man. And, and outside of just the physical appearance too, it's almost like sort of like this energy that you're putting off. Cause what was happening to me, was like at WeWork or these places, um, people that usually would sort of look up and just say hi, were like looking up and being like, Hey, how's it going? Or, or saying like, you look great. Or like, what are you doing different? Or like, and it was just a very different approach than I was used to. Like the people that I interact and see all the time were now, stopping me in my tracks to say these things and bring it up to me you know so yeah it was it's, it's it's sort of a vibe thing too it's it's just like this confidence that you're you you bring into the room um yeah and it just sort of like yeah i don't know explodes off of you <laughs> it, you're right it's weird because it's it's an invisible thing but energy is real you can bring energy in and yeah. what we are bringing in is an unconscious energy i'm a very energy yeah. oriented person so when i come into a room boom positive vibes but you can also be giving something off glowing or radiating and that is something that i would love to have with me for the rest of my life yeah 100 percent. and it's not just like you know, optimism and, and positive vibes. It's like, there were days, you know, there have been days where like, I was straight up pissed off or ready to take action. But the way I, I how my mind is sharp in this is that I'm also reframing all the stuff that's happening. I'm also taking all these situations and knowing that I can make the best out of them. I can, I'm going to be able to get through them. And, and when your mind's sharp and you're hitting on all cylinders, you know you can attack anything and that also radiates off you so even if you're having a bad day you walk into the room and it's still like who's this confident dude like you know and and not obviously i'm not trying to toot my own horn or whatever but it's just one of those things i think that's what's actually radiating off is no matter what you're going through that day there's just sort of this confidence that radiates off you um and people can feel it and sense it you know so can you give a word of encouragement or thoughts as our last thing to someone out there who might think about doing 75 hard or even who wants to take one action step, what can you share as sort of your final thought on all of this? Yeah, I mean, it comes down to the person for sure. I think, you know, I was somebody that I'll give you sort of my personal testimony and you, you can take it as, as you want. The reason why I got into this, like if you're someone that's struggling with weight loss, you can't quite commit to the goals you set for fitness. If you, if you find yourself just grabbing a Snickers bar instead of grabbing like a healthier bar or a protein shake or something like that, I was going through these things where my bad habits were sort of running 
these areas of my life where I really wanted to change them, but for whatever reason, I just didn't have the shock to the system to do it. And the 75 hard pro program plus accountability, that's sort of like the caveat to all this, in my opinion, is don't do it alone and do it based on what you need. So if you can just pick one thing, maybe you don't do 75 hard right now, but pick one thing off of the list that we've gone down and start to implement that if you if you feel like you don't have clarity of your mind maybe start visualization and maybe start or if you feel like you're going to the day crummy and you're always in a bad mood when you get to work or you know your office like start things where you know you have the biggest need and then sort of work your way down the list and if you feel ready hop in and make sure you get an accountability partner you know to to go on you with the journey you know i i love that for me it's live in action, do anything you can take one step forward. Like you said, in the name of positive progress in my testimony, remember I did not want to do 75 hard, go back and listen to the podcast that you and I did. This was not something that I was interested in until I realized when Andy said in 75 days, your life can change. And how many times have you had an opportunity where that is said to you, where you can change your life in two and a half months. And you and I are proof that you can change your life, your mindset, everything in two and a half months. And it's really about committing to it. It's not interested. You're committed to making it happen. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. Because I didn't want to do this until I said, why am I being a bitch? And if I want to reach my full potential, this is what's going to help me reach my full potential. So if you want to reach your full potential, reach out to Brendan or I, or listen to Andy's podcast or our previous podcast about this. We would love to be a positive resource to you on your journey. So Brendan, where can everybody connect with you? So on Instagram, I'm at Brendan Pettit. That's B-R-E-N-D-A-N-P-E-T-T-I-T. -T -T -T. Uh, yeah, at Brendan Pettit. And for me, you can hit me up on all social media platforms at Rob Cressy. Uh, like I said, if there's anything we can do to help you along on your journey, if this caused you to think or take action, let us know. We love hearing feedback from you. Sending plenty of good vibes your way, Brendan. Uh, I'm super happy to have you along on this journey, my friend. Our personal growth together and our friendship it has been an absolute blessing. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I, I appreciate you. Uh, more than words can describe, man. You've been uh, definitely an inspiration to me and you've definitely helped me sort of get out of my own way over the past, you know, 90 days plus. So, <laughs> and beyond that, like, it's just been a great journey over the last year to be able to run with you. So thank you too.